BCA 101 Introduction to Computers and Information Systems. We're starting Unit 3, Computer Systems in Detail. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We're going to talk about the uh, internal parts, internal parts of a PC, and we'll talk about other computing devices also. We need to have an understanding of um, the technology, whether we're buying a computer or whether we um, have computers that we use at work and so forth. We want to have an understanding of how they work together and our goal is to better understand the performance of the, com of the computer the performance of the computer, you know, in terms of how well it's operating. <clears throat> We're going to need to study the operating system one more time, a little more in depth, and then we're going to talk about the relationship again between hardware, the operating system, applications, and the user. And we'll also talk about different computing devices. So, to get started, the first thing is the ASCII code, the American Standard Code of Information Interchange. If you remember, we've already talked about bits and bytes. Binary digits, that represents something in computing. And a lot of times we'll use 8 bits to represent 1 byte. Typically, bits are used to talk about the number of bits, the bandwidth that we can use. We'll talk a little more about that here in the near future. And bytes are usually used more so for storage. What makes up a byte of information? <clears throat> now, the ASCII code is a code. So, for example, <clears throat> this, if you were to convert this binary number to using ASCII code, that would represent a capital A. And so we have different different codes that represent different characters. Now there's a whole nother method to represent numbers, and then there are wide ranges <laughs> of methods, different formats of organizing bits to represent Video, sound, pictures, dots on a screen, etc., etc. So we just give one example, the ASCII code, <clears throat> represent ones and zeros. So later on, when we talk about storage, you know, when a capital A is stored on a disk, this is how it's stored. Okay? <clears throat> word size, we put that with the bits. The uh, word size of a processor is how many bits it can manipulate at any one time. So CPUs have word size and they are in powers of 2 because binary digits, base 2. So 8, you know, 8, 16, so forth, um, 32, and currently. 64-bit processors. One of the reasoning behind understanding this would be when you download software to your computer, there may be options, a 32-bit software or a 64-bit, depending on what processor you have. So in class, we're going to work a little bit on looking at what information exists for the PC we're currently using so when we install some software we know that we're working with a 64-bit processor which would be the most current in most cases. Bits per second a lot of times we'll draw something that looks like this we got a pipe and how many bits per second can we send through there. More generically this is known as the bit rate. How many bits can, can move? <clears throat> so, for example, <clears throat> in the lab, 
the computer room in which we're in, we have a device called a switch, and we have cables connected to the switch, and most of those are operating at 100 million bits per second. That's actually how many bits every second can move through that cable. Going in and coming out. It varies if you're sending it through the air, if you're sending it through a wire, if you're sending it through fiber. And so we need to understand just a few of these definitions before we go into looking at the computer more in depth. And that is it.